Hello again my fellow Jetty users and welcome back to my workshop for another of Harry's little Jetty Clinic videos. And this one is about various ways for keeping track of what the sticks and switches and knobs do uh, on models where you don't normally use them. So I'm not talking about remembering that that's your elevator and that's your gear switch and that's your flap switch. It's about those one-offs from models that maybe you don't use a lot and you need to be reminded of what they are. And today's video is sponsored by a lovely cup of espresso and a chocolate hobnob. Hooray! Um, I seem to have eaten the chocolate hobnob, but you get the idea. Now, on screen here is something probably none of you will have seen before. It's very new. It's a fantastic Lua app, which I shall be showing you how to get to and how to use in a few minutes. Now, there are four ways of reminding yourself where is that switch for something you don't use very often? And the first of these I'm going to show you uses uh, a new invention called paper. Apparently you can buy this stuff, run it through something called a printer, get a nice output and you write on it with some sort of implement. And you can get <clears throat> something that looks like this. It's all lovely, <clears throat> pre-prepared for you like that. And then you can just write in the name of your model and fill in the boxes for what does what. Where on earth do you get this? Okay, you go to something called Birdie's RC blog. Uh, there's the web address for you. rc-soaring.blogspot.com Birdie's RC blog. And then you go here. This uh, allocation plans jetty. So let's try and find the mouse, get it there, off we go. Then having got to the Allocation Plans Jetty page, you scroll down, and it's showing you demonstrations of different uh, pages it has, and you get down to here. So for the DCs, 24, 16, 14, you can have uh, Jetty Sticks or RC Technic Sticks, I think this is for ones with switches on top. Or you can have for the DS transmitters with the jetty sticks or again with the uh, sticks on top. Okay, and I'm sure that they would, these would work nicely for DS12 as well. So there you go, there's the paper version for reminding you what does what. Now, conveniently, uh, for those of you who don't want to use something like paper, um, the transmitter actually tells you what's what. If you go into menu, model, functions assignment, and now press the tools button and it lists things for you. P1, function ailerons. You use this wheel to scroll down to P2, it tells you what it is, P3, P4. Now, the, there's nothing set up on this model particularly, so there's not a lot there. But if you've set up switches, um, it'll tell you uh, which logic switches they are, that you've got voice assigned to this, that it's a rate switch, that blah, 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 blah. So it's in there. It's um, It uses shorthand, so it'll say things like this, this switch is L1. You think... What's that? Well, it means it's logic switch one. So you go off and look at logic switch one, what it is, etc. And of course, some things will have multiple things on them um, because it might be a flight mode switch that also uh, speaks out a value to you and it triggers a logic switch and it triggers a rate and all this sort of thing. So each of these might have something on it. So although it looks to you like P1 is functions flaps, you've got to regard these as quite separate it's the highlighted line tells you there what it is. So as you move the highlighter, it tells you what its change is. So if you get stuck, it's all in the transmitter, or at least most of the things are. Um, there's the odd one or two things you do that won't show up here, but uh, it does tell you the bulk of it. OK, now the next two things are Lua apps. I'll show you the simpler one first. Uh, it's in German. All in German, but you'll get the idea, and it's quite useful. The, um, pardon my German pronunciation, but Schalter Belegung. Schalter, I think, meaning switch. And it's basically free text. Um, and the next one is this beautiful uh, visual display. 
in which you can scroll from the left screen, use the button here, go to the right screen, and you set a toggle switch if you've got a DS24, front rear toggle, I've set it there, and it looks at the back, and at the back tells you what there is. Notice it's not this left back, it's uh, looking at it from the back, so actually that's the left back area. Um, and because you've got fewer controls on the back, they've left you these three lines here, uh, or is it four lines, for free text. I think it's three lines. You can type in what you want there. Lovely. Okay, uh, how do we get these? Well, both of those apps, the one with the columns, etc., and the one with the display, come from uh, a couple of chaps in Germany, and there's the web address. Thorn hyphen Klaus hyphen jetty dot de. Uh, I don't think you need the slash de dot html. It'll find that for you. And it's uh, Thorn Jetty Lua apps by Klaus and Thorn. And they make some very interesting Lua apps. Uh, one of them is uh, particularly popular, um, uh, which is all sorts of fancy display for your front screen. Um, it, it's not for me because I uh, really want uh, voice output when I'm flying. But anyway, if you go to their downloads, come down here, switch app, which is the simple one with the, the columns uh, and rows on it, just free texting in. And this one, switch 57, which at the time of me making this video in uh, April 2021, is very new, and that's the one with the graphics on it. So you just click on those. Click on that one. Yes, the, up, the update. And come down here. Oh, dear. I hate these uh, finger pads on pooters. There we go. There is a manual which is all in German, but if you go to um, a Google Translate website, you can upload documents and put it in there. I have been through it and tidied it and sent the text to uh, Thorn, so maybe one day they'll get around to uh, issuing the, a revised manual in English as well. But as you can see, currently available in German, English and Spanish and Italian. Uh, that means the app. And what you do is you accept the license down there, say download, unzip it. And when you unzip it, there will be quite a number of files and you don't need all of them in your transmitter. So there's the zip, let's have a look at it. So here you can see what you'll get when you unzip it. <clears throat> you get a folder called Switch 57. You get the uh, PDF of the instructions, a license, a switch 57.lc and a switch 57.lua. The only ones you need to take to your transmitter are the folder switch 57 and the file switch 57.lc. You do not need to take the PDF, the text file or the .lua file. Take the .lc, switch 57, copy and paste them into the apps folder of your transmitter. And it's a similar thing with their uh, Shelter uh, app. Okay. So let's have a look at these in your jetty. You go to Apps, User Applications, you press the plus button and you add them in. Uh, that's the Shelter booth or whatever. There's Switch 5.7. Uh, you can ignore that. That's something that's coming later. Quite why it's not showing the name there, I don't know. But anyway, uh, you can come down here and look at Schalter Belegung. Right. And it allows you two windows when you put them into displayed telemetry. Uh, Fenster 1, Window 1. And that is rows. And that is columns. The size of the text, I think it's better as normal rather than mini or bold. Uh, and I'm not quite sure what that means, but what it does is if it's switched off and there is no text in the boxes, it just shows a blank screen. It doesn't show the empty boxes. 
window two, you can have different numbers of, uh, what did I say those were? Columns and rows, rows, columns, same thing again. And now to get to them, you go to window one. And what I've said there, uh, oops, Zilla one is row one. So column one says hello. And column two will say SC. I don't need the row two. Column one says SC. Row two says turret. And then you keep going down like this, just free texting into each thing that you want. If you go to window two, you can start putting the same thing in. I've left it blank. And then you go to timer sensors, displayed telemetry, press your plus button, go to Lua and add them in. Uh, so it's that's the Schalter Belagun. Don't worry about the fact it says Crow on it or Crow here. That's just the name of the model that's in at the moment. OK, and then you can come along and here we are. So there, as you saw, is the free text that I put in, reminding me that switch SC is the turret switch. And you can come along. I mentioned that uh, because we had that, oh, whatever it was, switched on, uh, it will show us a blank table. If we had it switched off, you wouldn't see the, the blanks there. You think that's tiny, but as soon as you type something in, it expands out and does the job. OK, so that's the basic switch. This is the switch 5.7. So you go back to uh, your apps and you add in the switch 5.7, as we showed you there. OK, so you just press plus, choose it from your list of apps, put it in. And it should show down here for your options. Um, you can go into it through there. But bizarrely, it's showing up below system, switch 5.7. That may be an error in the app. Perhaps they'll sort that out. OK, so you're into your options. The toggle front back view. So if you have a DS24 with switches on the back, you can set this switch. If you have another uh, uh, transmitter, the 12, 14, 16, you can still set the switch and it will show you a rear view, but it's empty. So there's no point. I should mention also that the display that is shown uh, is clever enough to know which transmitter you've got. So it actually shows the relevant front and back for your transmitter. For example, the DS12 doesn't have the side sliders. It has a knob on each top corner. And if you load this onto the 12, and I've tried it, lo and behold, it actually shows you a view of the 12, not the 24. So very clever little app. Do you want to center the text in the upper left and upper right? No, I'm quite happy for it to be left justified. Then you come down here and you select your switch. And it basically lists all your switches for you. I'll go up to the top. There we are, SE. And so you just select a switch and type something in. Uh, which one's that? SC. Uh, See, it's got, and I've typed in front, rear toggle. Let's try S, uh, where's S, E? Uh, SF, I'll show you SF. It's blank, so I can go in there and I can type in something like this. Say OK to that. And that's basically it. So you just go through them all, typing in the ones you need to do. Now, you obviously, you come down here, there's all your switches. Now, L1 refers to the rows on the back, if you've got a DS24. So that's left back, row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, row 5, row 6, row 7. And the bottom ones... If we have a look around here, so there's uh, SM and SO, yep, but the, those show up in the uh, switch operations. Or do they? Yeah. 
So there's your rows from the back. The R refers to the back right rows. And then you get to G. Now you think, what's G? Uh, well, I've, I've written to Thorne suggesting that for the English language version, they change this to P because this means the proportional control. So G5 is actually P5, the slider on the right. G6 is P6, the slider on the left. That's P7 and P8, the knobs on the front. And then for a DS24, we've got P9 and P10, which are on the back. OK. So having done that, what you have to do is, of course, put it on the display. So you go to timer sensors again, display telemetry, press the plus button. And from Lua, add your switch 57 left. And if you want it, switch 57 right. They're two separate screens. You don't have to add the front and back if you've got a DS24, because that's all handled by the switch that you assigned for it. And there you go. Once we're here then, now you can just move through your displayed telemetry screens like this. Toggle to the back like that. Move left and right on the back. Switch it again. And you're back to the front. So uh, there you go, some uh, ways, four ways of finding and remembering uh, what you've done with your programming for those more obscure functions and switches on models that you don't fly perhaps particularly often, and this lovely Lua app. So have fun with that.